I'm sure a lot of you have noticed the media narrative every time has not passed their so-called test, they move the goalposts and they shift it to another test. Even though we beat Manchester United this past weekend on Sunday, convincing my opinion, even though the scoreline flatters Manchester United, the next test is Manchester City in the FA Cup. Mm. I'm hearing some of the narrative being pushed by content creators, mainstream pundits of, of how that would be the first barometer to test Arsenal. Like, if I remember clearly and closely, at the beginning of the season, oh, it's just pre-season, even though there were signs, clearly that Arsenal was a different animal during the pre-season, it's just pre-season, oh, against Crystal Palace, Crystal Palace will beat us under the light. We went through that one, they said we haven't played any big team. We beat Liverpool, oh, Liverpool are weak. We went to Old Trafford, we lost, even though we were the better team. They said, okay, let's see how we bounce back from that. We bounce back with a convincing victory against Brentford. Oh, it's just Brentford. How many more times will they move the goalpost? Getting tired of test, test, test. How many more times do we need to go to the clinic for this so-called test, metaphorically? Every time we have to pass this test and pass the other test. Now, um, on Friday, we play Manchester City in the FA Cup. Regardless of the results, I don't think it'll have any bearing on the Premier League. I don't think so. Even though some of you think that I'm trying to chicken out in case we lose that match. I don't think it'll have any bearing. Why do I say so? I'll, I'll give you some why I think it won't have any bearing on the Premier League match. When we lost against Manchester United at Old Trafford in the reverse fixture that we beat Manchester United yesterday, a lot of people pretty much uh, Arsenal uh, against uh, Manchester United at the Emirates were saying Manchester United were the only team to beat us, right? That they have uh, the know-how on how to beat us. Ten Hag was going to come to the Emirates and set up. Even during the press conference, Ten Hag said he had a plan on how to decipher Arsenal. And we saw the plan was put to shred after 60 minutes. Because I understand the first half, the game was clearly contested. When it got to the 61... After 61 minutes, we were dominating Man U. We took over the match and we were peppering them until we got a winner. So this nonsense plan that Tim had had was put to shreds. So let's focus ahead of the match on Friday against Manchester City. I'm expecting a bit of rotation, even though most of you or most of us would think because after that match, we have like seven more, seven, seven more days to play for the next match against Everton in the English Premier League. So why would that Arsenal rotate? We have we have to give minutes to Smith Rowe. He hasn't since he came up from injury. He hasn't had enough playing time. We need to give minutes to uh McTonner. He had a brilliant World Cup. Uh, we need to give minutes to Trossard, our new signing. I'm not sure Ateta will be so keen to rush or give minutes to the new. Uh, left-sided centre defender we bought, Jaco. I'm not sure about that because he needs to adjust to the league. Uh, he needs to acclimatise, so I'm not too sure. But I expect a few changes. I'm not expecting heavy rotation. I'm expecting a few changes. I'm suspecting that Teta will uh, keep Eddie as a main striker to continue his momentum, to give him more confidence. So I'm not expecting heavy rotation. The only slots I expect a bit of rotation or changes will be the left-back uh, Kerentiani for Zinchenko, McTona for Ramsdale, the goalkeeper. Uh, maybe Tomiyasu for Ben White in the right back. In the midfield, I expect Pate and Jaka to continue. I'm not sure he want to drop Odega for Fabio Vieira. I think Fabio Vieira can do a great job, but his physicality needs to improve. He is not strong enough. Even technically, I think he's a fantastic player. I think he can be a match for Odega, but physically. He has not yet acclimatized or adjusted to the league. So those are the few changes I'm expecting. I expect Saka to start. Like, there's enough recovery time before the Everton match, so Saka should start. Martinelli, I'm not sure. I mean, he has been struggling for the past few games. Maybe Trossard will start. But I won't be shocked if uh, Martinelli gets the nod uh, over Trossard. And in, this, in the centre, uh, attacking uh, the number nine, I expect Eddie to maintain his... Uh, is uh is a slot and maintains momentum, so there won't be so many significant changes. So it should be a it should be a fantastic match to watch out for on Friday, FA Cup, and I I expect Pep to put out a strong team. We know 
Manchester City have a very, very deep squad. Even on the bench, they have a very, very deep bench. So whoever he selects for that match are capable of giving us a good match. So let's see how it pans out. Like I said, I don't believe the outcome of that match will have a bearing on the Premier League fixture between those two clubs. Both clubs are yet to play themselves in the English Premier League due to the death of the Queen. Uh, that was last year and the match was called off. But, but the narrative that is being pushed out that that match, the result of the FA Cup between uh, Manchester City against Arsenal with a bearing on the league, I do not subscribe to it. I do not believe in it. I do not believe it. Regardless, even though we beat them, in the FA Cup and dump them out, I do not believe it will have a bearing. I think the merits of that match in the Premier League will be different. I think it will be different. Arteta has shown that things don't... How would I put it? Arteta has shown he's not psychologically affected by previous results. I'll give you another example. We lost to Spurs last year and I believe... I, I Check my archives and look at some of my videos. I believe we lost that game last year and we considered the top four slot to sports because likes of party were injured. Ben White couldn't play that game, was kind of injury. We had the core of our team was out. That was why, in my opinion, we lost that much. Not because sports were brilliant. No, I don't think so. I think we missed key players that made us lose that match. This season, even though we had without Jesus and we had likes of party, Ben White, Saliba, and the defense was key, we saw the results. So this narrative that is being pushed for me is baseless. It has no logic to it. It has no merit to it. Do not fall for it. I get it. A lot of people, uh, how would I put it? A lot of people do not want to see Arsenal win the league. And I, I, it's understandable. A lot of people who have enjoyed Arsenal being the banter club for a long time. And it is so, I like they, they can't just twist their mind or change their mind to understand that the software has been updated. Things have changed. They can't just believe it. And they do not want to believe what they're saying with their eyes and what they, and the stats they are reading. They do not want to believe, which is fair. But, like I said, let's see how it pans out on Friday. And like I said, I don't believe the results on Friday, either Arsenal win or Manchester City wins on Friday in the FA Cup. I don't think that result will have any bearing on what happens when those two juggernauts play in the league uh, uh so when they play in the league rather so let's say it pans out if you like my content and you're not subscribed what are you waiting for do me a favor make sure you subscribe to this channel uh, if you like the content make sure you stick a like on the video very very important for the algorithm and do not forget to turn on your notification bells and i'll see you guys next one